I know. Bill the Ear. I'm in a library. Unexpected. But Billy rolls with it. That's okay. Uh, we're going to have a discussion, my friend and I, about how everything ties together. Because it does. And I think it'll be fun. Just roll with it. Do you want to start or should I start just laying out uh, threads and see what we can do? Go ahead and start. <sighs> well, what's happened to us over the last few years with the, uh, the medical tyranny... And we got to see how awful it could be with examples in Australia and Austria and other places. Uh, we figured out what they're up to and what they're doing. But some people just think it's too hor horrifying. They can't get their head around it and they don't want to listen. And for other various reasons. And then all this stuff started playing out. Oh, 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 put that on a back burner. It's all about war in Ukraine. <clears throat> it's been going on for eight years. But then, interestingly enough... After the Russians started doing their operation, uh, unexpected success, unexpected that they would do it. I was, I was there, and America was going again and again. And, oh, they're going to attack Ukraine! They're going to attack Ukraine! They're going to do it real soon! They're going to attack. That was a tactic to keep them from attacking Ukraine using social shame in the media. But when they did, I don't think they really were expected. I don't think the West expected them to do it. When they did, they stumbled into all these documents and these bio labs and all this other stuff that wasn't even secured. And COVID. Aerosol dis dispersal documents, buying drones that were equipped to do that. All kinds of wonderful things. You could find all that stuff on Telegram. Have you, have you been following that stuff? Have you seen any of the stuff that came out of Ukraine? Yes. John Dugan did some pretty good stuff on it. And uh, I knew a guy in Moscow that uh, I was connected with, part of the Russian Civic Chamber, Eurasianist guys, and he was, uh, uh, what was he? Some sort of uh, biotechnology specialist. He had an advanced degree in that. I couldn't learn much from him, though. <laughs> it's, it's over my head. <laughs> but... Uh, it all ties together. That was a proving ground. That was a free experimental place where they could do illegal experiments on people and develop stuff for use worldwide. And also make a lot. Of, they make money doing this stuff, for crying out loud. Hunter Biden's laptop, Hunter Biden's uh, business deals with uh, biological companies, setting up the labs, which were started under Obama. Obama went and cut the ribbon on some of them. And now they say they didn't have them. Mm -hmm. Oh, Oh, those are to, what was their reasoning? Those are to defend against uh, biological terrorism. <laughs> well, in order to do that, nobody's doing biological terrorism. You have to develop the weapons to see what they're like. You have to create it. <laughs> you have to create the weapons. <laughs> you have to create it in that's order to know I, how to defend against that's it. That's what I like about America. And it's okay We're for create. us to create mm -hmm. them because we would never use them on anybody. The Wuhan lab, that was American too. Right. And the China virus and China, the communists are doing it. They're going to attack us. They're trying to break down America. You see it all through the conservative circles. These pale conservatives always want to have a boogeyman like China or Russia, and it's your own freaking corporations. And I choose to not bring politics into it as much. <laughs> I kind of look at it as like people are sane and rational. Maybe close to being sane and rational. Some people are. Or completely fucked in the head. Their politics, to me, don't have anything to do with it. So I'm not going to label something left, something right, something mm -hmm. this, something that. It's It all ties together, but it all comes back to each of us as individuals not identifying with a left or right false dichotomy is all it is it's it's, it's just the terms left and right are meaningless they can't even define themselves or what they believe in and it's pushed by the media mm-hmm that's a oh, bad sign. Their brain's a little bit wired this way. They'll go in this chute. Their brain's this mm -hmm. way. They'll go in that chute. Left, right. And, uh, social media 
this is data gathering. It's all about data gathering. You've heard what they're working on with making the personality types, all the slots to fit everybody in, mm -hmm. so they mm -hmm. know how to market things to you. It's mass marketing. It's neuro-linguistic programming. It's uh, what, PR influencing. They're studying all of us and making categories. And I, last I checked, it was years ago since I looked into this, there were like 1,100 categories. They'll fit you in one of them, a category. You like this and you don't like this. Like, 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 like. You uh, are interested in these things and you, they're, they're narrowing the categories. They're making them very specific and then they're gearing influence to try to spin you and guide you into right think Which using that I as get a tool. That that's the way it's being presented so that they can market to us. Part of me says that's bullshit. Everything right now seems to be on some level of implosion everywhere. Mm -hmm. Where are all these goods going to come from that were that are going to be marketed? I think that there's there's something that doesn't. It's not, a tool. It doesn't ring true when they present. Oh, this is so we can market better. What the fuck are you going to sell to people? There, there's. <laughs> they're not selling anything good anyway. No. And they're, they're disco well, the same companies own everything, so they just have lots of different front companies with lots of different brands and lots of different varieties of brands, but it's all good profits going to the same people, so they don't give a shit. There, there's no quality. That doesn't have to be. They sell you just complete crap because there's no alternative to it. You've got a thousand choices of crap. You know, um, I don't know if you ever listened to any of Allison McDowell's um presentations on her YouTube channel. Mm, doesn't shrink right around your bell. She's from out east, and when her daughter's school started having um, five, six, seven years ago, whatever the hell the issue was, she started doing research, and she hasn't stopped since. And she does great interviews. Um, and she talks about the digitizing of humans mm -hmm. and just going i mean and she lays out this is this read this watch this um things like that um and with preschools with their smart play tables oh yeah that they're already at the age of three and four collecting data on mm -hmm. kids and they're gonna but she also says that and like the blockchain, I do, do not believe is a good thing um, to get kids on the blockchain. And um, most things created by man is not good for man, no matter how it's sold. Blockchain, oh, that's the way to fight against the man. No, it's the way to be absolutely tracked. Exactly. Now, there's, you know, the way it works right now, there's some, some leeway, but the overarching technology, the way they're wanting to use it, well, banks are wanting to get into it, too. That tells you right there what it's all about. To get around sanctions and stuff, I've used it. I bought crypto and cashed it in in a Russian wallet, and it's the only way I could get my money, the only way I could have access to my bank account. Uh, it's doable, and they allow it. The way it's set up right now, they can, well, okay, a good example is like social media. They can't shut it down and control it because then they lose the data and they couldn't study it. They have to allow it to exist so they can learn more about it and fine tune it and come up with more ideas. That's a theory, anyway. Bastards. <laughs> you thought it's open? <laughs> no, that was just in response to what you're saying. Mm. Well, of course, I think of things all the time. I know. <laughs> so, I don't like that painting up there. <laughs> Looks like she's stoned. No, 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 no. Don't be showing it. No, just, you know, they don't need to be seeing everything. Oh, okay. We're good. It ties into everything because they're wanting to do it to everything. The blockchain, the digitization, the uh, inventory, you know they're inventory and everything in the world right now, don't you? The people that 
presume to own the planet. Why would you inventory <laughs> things unless you presume you own it? You inventory things that you own. The corporations have all decided they own every drop of water, every form of energy, every stick, every twig, every grain, every piece of sand, everything. They own everything. And they're going to inventory us, too, because we're human resources. Uh, you could write a brilliant dystopia just by reading Klaus Schwab's book and Bill Gates's book and watch their TED Talks and their, their, their managers and all these other big corporate techno weenies when they give their TED Talks and they tell you about the brilliant future. You could, you could write a dystopia novel with the things that they're telling you, and they actually intend and are moving toward doing those things. And you know what? Okay, so with the whole um, Bill Gates crap that he presented, or um, there was a lot of stuff that I was sharing, like within the first six, eight months of mm -hmm. our pandemic, um, from them. I'm sharing it from them. Crickets. You're a conspiracy theorist. I, I, I had to preface all, all the things in a lot of my videos and all my writing for years. Uh, where did I get this? Where do I get these crazy ideas? Uh, from the most powerful and influential people on the planet, the billionaires that meet at Davos and stuff, they said it. They said that's what they're going to do. But when I say it, well, the media even says you're crazy. You're, you're a conspiracy first, if you believe that. Well, who was it that interviewed Gates? Um, um, wherever the hell it was. And, I mean, and this was a few years ago. Oh, yeah, investing in vaccines is going to give me a, you know, best investment ever. At least 20. Bottom line. It's business. Business you know, is bottom it's like, line. He, but he wants to save the world. He's going over there to Africa, and he's actually giving kids shots himself. He doesn't have a medical license. He should be arrested just for that. I can't go give shots to people. Have you tried? <laughs> well, they probably let me now as long as it's the right shot. But uh, anybody, anybody can stick something up your nose, too, real far. You don't know where that thing came from. But uh, there's no bottom to it. It all ties together because they want to... Oh, the, the dystopia. The, what, what they want is you're not going to be able to pick a, a stick up off the ground and carve a spoon out of it. That'll have to be registered. That stick, you got to pay for that. And you made a spoon, value added, you pay for that. You use it, you have to have some sort of uh, probably subscription in order to use it. If you give it to somebody or sell it to somebody, they have to buy a subscription. All this money goes to them. And if they throw it in the fire, it's energy, and that has to be taxed. I mean, that's how ridiculous it is. They want every minute little thing. That's nothing but evil. <laughs> Who appointed them? Who elected them? They're not really smart. They only know one thing is grabbing everything for themselves, grabbing control. They're really kind of dull. But I still think there's some, there are entities or something behind those that we are allowed to see. Mm hmm There's that. It's evil. I'm not saying. It comes from somewhere else as well. That's the only explanation for it. To me, Gates, Schwab, um, jerks like that. Again, they're the front men. They're the managed project managers and the face. You know exactly. Though they're what what is shown, but there's 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 a deeper. Not that I'm going to get into that shit. But anyways, so probably about a year into this bullshit. And I was seeing the way that things were really going, and I'm like, saying, they're going all in. Mm -hmm. They are, they just pushed all the chips in. They're in a hurry for some reason. Exactly. Something went wrong. <laughs> you know, it's so like, encouraging. It's good news. Well, hmm. was it encouraging and good news? Because Did I think panicking? it's panicking. Because I, okay, you can see it. I can see it. Mm hmm. Other people are just were like in an avalanche of fear-driven information. Mm -hmm. Let's see, watch television. It always comes again, back to that. Again, again, again. Right. <laughs> so, and I did tell somebody who face to face 
because they were like, oh, I, I'm, uh, I'm so scared. I'm so, and I'm like, that's a choice you make. If you don't want to be scared, turn off your television. Stop watching 24 hours a day of COVID numbers. I mean, they have to replace that with something, though, because they can't stand the voices in their head. They can't stand their own thoughts. And a lot of people can't. They can't be alone with their own thoughts. They have to have noise input all the time. Why? There's no peace. I don't know. I mean, something parasitic. Hmm. Maybe. They, they put people in solitary confinement for punishment. If I was in prison, I would consider solitary confinement to be a dream come true. I wouldn't be in a population. I wouldn't mind being in solitary confinement if I have something to write with and some books anyway. But then so, I'm odd. So once I could see that they were going all in, then that changed the focus of what I was going to spend my time reading, watching, listening to. Because I'm... I'm not going to become a political person. That's a man-made creation. Artificial politics is all you've got. There is real politics. There is real politically in, in a, a culture or in a, in a nation of controlling your environment through politics. It's, well, war by other means to reverse the saying. <laughs> Controlling your environment, deciding how you're going to live. Somebody's going to make those decisions, and they're going to impose them on you. Getting involved with politics is merely negotiating that. Of course, the game's rigged now, and they're cheating. So, it, but uh, it still is effective. For a long, long oh yeah, time. but still, it has an effect. People do have rights. You were telling me last time about these people, and I saw them that stood up, stood their ground, and managed to stay in. And then the lawsuits came, and they started making them back down. I mean, politics still does work, real politics, but it's so easy to get sidetracked and diverted and run off into a false dichotomy and, it, and, it, and, it, and attack your own allies. It's all trickery and deception. Theater. I'm not going to do political talk because ultimately, do you think really when we die and if we have to give... Um, an accounting for our lives, how we voted is going to matter. We're talking um, about two different things for politics then. <laughs> I, well, I just, I don't even like the word mm. politics. I like nature. Mm. Nature. It either oh, works. I have to or look that word up again. It, we have to look words up all the time that we use. Hello. I looked up polar. I did, did too. Okay. What did you get? Um, I was looking up a lot of words last night. <laughs> you forgot. Okay. I can't. What did it say? Well, everything related to uh, they wanted to take it to the Arctic or the Antarctic and every, all the definitions, uh, and then polar in electrical sense. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's used as a metaphor in everything. Poles, having two different poles, magnetic poles. The magnetic poles on the Earth, North and South Pole. Bipolar, uh, I think uh, the, I, I read all these definitions and all the ways that this is, there's a whole page of them. Condensed, you can condense it into like a magnet. Uh, See, something well, I guess it, maybe rather than looking at definitions, um, I was looking at etymology hmm. of words last night. I usually do that. It never occurred to me. I'm really slipping. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> Where did polar come from? No, I don't, because I think the last thing I looked was looking at last night was utopia, mm -hmm. which is no place. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not a good thing. Within even the definitions, it's not a good thing. And they took Latin out of school, so people don't know where the words if came from. If there is one language I would learn before I died, it would be Latin. You'd understand your own language, then. Heaven or learning forbid. any other language will help you to understand your own language. No, I remember Latin. my sister came home from school when I was a kid, and this had to have been 69 or 70, and she was overjoyed because she didn't have to study Latin anymore. They took it out. They ended it. 
that was not a good thing. But again, that was something in high school, correct? Mm -hmm. Why wait till high school? That's something. They didn't in the old days. They started Latin when you're a little kid. Hello? They start well, classical education starts when you're a wee little tot. You start learning Latin. Right. They teach foreign languages in Russia where my kids go to school at a very early age. For a second form, they start you on one foreign language. And it's required to graduate. You have to master a foreign language before you graduate. And like speak it fluently? Or? Master it. Okay. None of them speak it fluently. That's why you meet. You, uh, you can always find somebody that speaks English especially in Moscow or St. Petersburg, you could just pick somebody, walk up and start talking to them. And uh, probably, I haven't done it that much, but uh, to, not, I mean, not enough to, to come up with uh, percentages, but most of the time, most of the time, they can converse with you in English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can understand yeah. it there. Maybe using Russian grammar, but yeah, you can understand it. So the way, how... How? Do, what methods do they use to teach it to languages to your children? I uh, do. They start with let's conjugate verbs. No, they uh, start memorizing vocabulary, and they have vocabulary words that they work with, and they make them use them in sentences once they're advanced a little bit. Uh, they use British English teaching materials. In the schools, even, they use Tip Top. And that's, I think, a British company. But I think it's they've got a lot of Russians working in it because some of their grammar is atrocious. And it's not even English or British grammar. They use British grammar and British word forms mainly. But they'll say stuff like, uh, uh, this is Jeff. He has got a, a kitten. He has got. Is it? I mean, that doesn't sound right to me. I never really looked it up. Maybe I should have, but he has got something. And they, they word all their sentences like that. A lot of them, a whole string is, she has got this and he has got that. Well, I have got or or, a pouch. or Well, let's see. Would you say she has got herpes? <laughs> I don't really know. That sounds more correct. I mean, well, I mean. So eventually, <laughs> it, as they're I, practicing their, their, <laughs> their foreign language, they're going to come down the list. She has got herpes. Correct. Because hmm. I, uh, I don't think the way we're doing it um, in this country, when languages aren't taught by the people who can speak it. Mm -hmm. Who understand it. Because why? I took German in high school mm -hmm. for one year. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I didn't like the language. Mrs. Eggerly? No. Well, she was good. Okay. No. Um, but why the hell are we taught to conjugate verbs in German? I'm not going to be writing to anybody in Germany. Teach us how to speak and be able to communicate with them. In my experience, language learning, the best way is to get... To listen, you have to listen, and you have to be able to listen and distinguish words. You have to learn the words, and you have to learn the, the basic grammar. German grammar is not much different than ours, I guess, except for having masculine and feminine and making strings of words with lots of hyphens in them. Uh, Russian is vastly different, extremely different grammar. The word form determines its usage instead of the order. Mm -hmm. And there's six cases, and you have to get the cases right, and everything has to match the case. It's you. you it's like uh, when you're a beginner, you have to pre-plan your sentences. You have to work it all out before you start. But you just start saying the Russian words, and uh, they can understand you. But you're talking to them like Tarzan. <laughs> so? Well, to learn to speak properly, once you get to a point, you get more and more fluent. You listen to people, you recognize words, and you see how other people speak. And if you're not hanging out with... Uh, you know, lower register people, you learn how to speak properly. I can't understand low register people. I can't understand them at all in Russian. Truck drivers, carpenters, because they speak in slang, they round off the words, they leave the grammatical endings off. It's like if you had English as a second language and you were in Scotland in a bar talking to a bunch of truck drivers, you wouldn't, I can't understand what they're saying and they're speaking English. <laughs> in it, they, the, the word choices, the slang, lots of slang. Uh, 
ending every sentence with in it. And I knew a Scottish lawyer, driver, lawyer, lorry driver that spoke, he, he taught English in Sevastopol. He taught shift captains how to polish their English. So it was kind of strange. It's a strange world languages. Mm -hmm. But it's good to learn them, even to have a rudimentary understanding of them. I got almost fluent in Spanish years and years ago, but then when I learned Russian, I forgot all of it. Hmm. You remember your German? Not really. But then again, I never even came close to being fluent. What was the requirement for the German class? It wasn't required in our high school to have a foreign language to graduate, was it? Because my sister took know. German, and then my older sister took French. I slept a lot since then. I forgot a lot. That's too far But back. you don't need it. No, but... You have no use for it. No. Do you well, think it helped you understand your language, your native language? No. <laughs> no. Like, back then, we actually...